traditional owners of the land in which we meet. I'm on Wurundjeri land and pay my respects to the elders past and present. It's great to be back after quite a number of years now, Eddie. Um, and also thank you um, ECCV uh, for inviting me back. Um, and also thank you to Fecker and ECCV continue, continuing to run anti-racism campaigns and raising these issues because it has progressively gotten worse, I think, over these few years. Um, and uh, I mean, uh, I think, first of all, racism is not new. Um, and since the constitution that um, that that uh, Australia's constitution was established, um, and then the Australia the, the white Australia policy, I mean, all these um, uh, policies, uh, w w when Australia was established, it was really to prevent people of certain race, um, of, of certain background away from Australia. So um, recognising that there are a lot of history when it comes to racism in Australia is important. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to go back and dwell on the history, but without understanding some of the um, history and, and the uh, background to how we got here, it's really hard to move to the future and also to create that inclusive society. So I just wanted to, I guess, raise that, um, that even though there's a lot of uh, racism happening right now, um, it, I mean, uh, the, the first, first Australians have been experienced this since, the establishment of, uh, of Australia. Um, and I, one of the things that I guess from an uh, Asian Australian perspective is COVID-19 racism. Uh, so since COVID-19 hit Australia, there has been uh, an increasing number of uh, racial incidents towards um, uh, Asian Australians. Uh, anyone with Asian backgrounds, uh, including international students who've experienced quite, um, quite a, a lot of uh, racism, especially when they um, go, to, go to uni um, and also uh, in shops uh, and online as well. Um, and during this time, I guess there, there had been quite a few high profile incidents that's been reported in the news. Uh, but anecdotally, I've also been hearing quite a lot that's been happening um, in, in other areas as well. Um, and also even uh, subtle racism that, for example, you know, if they participate in a, in a meeting that people might make uh, comments that are that are racist, but then it's quite subtle. Um, and for international students, especially if they are trying to um, uh, do do work in a, a team that's when sometimes they uh, experience that level of uh, racism um, and I guess because of this um, I actually started a project called resilience against racism uh, you can search about that we've got a website um, happening um, and the and the purpose of that is because first of all we believe that everyone deserves to belong um, and the target is really primarily towards uh, international students, but also Asian Australians who are experiencing um, COVID inspired racism, even though the uh, project is inclusive. So we're not excluding anybody who wants to access it. Uh, it's just that the, the way we design a lot of the workshops that we created, had been um, about COVID and also um, the, the examples that we use uh, tends to uh, target Asian Australians. And uh, so by through creating this, and, and, and I guess the, the, the whole purpose of the idea is really to help people build personal and community resilience uh, and, and to be able to cope with uh, the experiences of racism, but also witnesses of racism. One of the things that we found as we were doing a lot of research um, in this space was that um, the, the, the best way to combat racism is really to 
encourage and empower people who might be witnessing racism to step in, to support others and neighbours and their um, and and sometimes strangers in in the moment. Um, and because as much as we we like, we want police to be there all the time but uh, unfortunately that's not always going to be the case so even if you report it straight away police will take time before they can actually be at the scene and so uh, empowering more uh, witnesses to actually step in is a, a good way to combat some of these uh, issues uh, but at the same time having sp spoken to quite a number of people what they've told us is that they, uh, a lot of people don't know what to do in these circumstances and not sure uh, if, because there are certain circumstances where they, they might feel unsafe to actually speak up as well, or potentially if they do speak up, whether or not they will actually create a worse situation than it already is. So, um, so the whole idea is to uh, uh, provide people with the skills and the tools to be able to uh, speak up, um, but also for people who experience racism to be able to deal with their uh, emotional uh, um, journey, because I'm sure anybody who've experienced racism would know um, it, it's not just an incident. It actually impacts you uh, emotionally, whether we recognize it or not. And so, uh, yeah, so, so I guess, yeah, in, in, in that, in that um, in, in, I guess in, in creating some of these uh, workshops, what we've realized is that there's not a lot of um, programs that links racism, resilience, and identity together. So that's kind of all the literature that we've um, identified um, and used to create these workshops. Um, so yeah, so for people who wants to know a bit more, happy to you know, talk to you a little bit more about that as well. Um, so like I said, it's um, focused on Asian Australians, but at the same time, we love to work with uh, people from other cultures as well so that we can, create something that can um, that that has that um, link to to other cultures because even though racism is the same um, but at the same time the environment that create that created the racism differ so that's why when we create uh, workshops um, it's it's important to recognize that as well and also um, for I guess um, Chinese Australians specifically, apart from apart from uh, COVID and the pandemic, there's also the uh, foreign interference uh, area that impact on the racism towards, especially Chinese Australians. Um, so, in a recent Senate inquiry, so I was um, part of a Senate inquiry to talk about uh, diaspora issues. In, in Australia um, and the one thing that the senator asked me was to um, unconditionally condemn the Chinese Communist Party. So he, and this is a, a inquiry towards three Chinese Australians, myself and two others. Um, and it, it, it was interesting because he didn't actually ask anybody else this. So if we think that it's an appropriate question to ask us, um, everybody else should be asked exactly the same question, but that was actually not true. Um, so, so I guess for Chinese Australians, they, there's also another layer of um, impact towards the community, and that is the foreign interference. Uh, foreign interference issue and what was interesting was my whole submission and my whole presentation was about uh, people not wanting to put their hands up for public office um, and, and of course I'm doing that at this moment running for deputy lord mayor um, but also people speaking up publicly uh, always ask their loyalty um, and also question their um, allegiance to Australia there are already a lot of uh, people on Twitter who've been commenting on that. 
And in recent um, times, there's also another fellow Chinese Australian uh, in, in Glen Ira, who's also running um, in, in council, who now said that she doesn't want to win anymore because of this. So, um, so this type of racism do have impact on, on a lot of people. And at a time when we, uh, we, we say that we want to see culturally diverse people in, in our public institutions and put their hands up in council, but also in um, for, for public office, it made it even harder. Um, and, uh, and, and more the reason why we need to do more of it to encourage uh, people who, uh, who, and support people who wants to put their hands up to make sure that they're not subject to that type of questioning. Um, and I guess ha um, having gone through this, this is probably the first time I felt that um, I, I now understand somewhat to what the Muslim community was feeling back in the days when, it, when we were all talking about, about terrorism. Um, previously, I understand it intellectually, um, but now uh, it's actually understanding it from an emotional perspective, how they actually felt. The feeling of helplessness, because on the, on the one hand, you want others to speak on your behalf. So you want people to speak for you. But on the other hand, you also want your own authentic voice because you know the community, you know what people are going through. But then at the same time, it doesn't matter what you say. Um, it doesn't matter where you stand. And most, most people are um, not necessarily one, one or the other. They're not necessarily on any of the extreme, um, but people would twist it, whatever you say. Um, and so hence the community is uh, on edge. Uh, and for many Chinese Australians, um, I mean, some of them are, are now even con uh, not participating in terms of like even political donations, for example, because they don't want to be subject to people potentially saying that they, they have links to the Chinese Communist Party. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so there's a whole layer of um, impact that is there. And I think that's probably um, reasons why that I think, you know, I, I, I agree with um, Eddie that we need to support each other. Um, and, and I also know that, you know, sometimes it is also inter cultural as well. So it's working across different cultures because um, I've certainly have many conversations with my fellow Chinese Australians of their own racism towards um, other communities, um, especially when it comes to African communities, Muslim communities as well. During those times, I've had numerous discussions with them to say that they, they, they shouldn't be um, uh, having discriminatory views towards other people um, and that we should treat everybody the same. Um, and, and, and now the, the community is, uh, the, the Chinese community is questioned for their loyalty and needing other people to support them as well. So I think uh, we, we certainly need to do, do much more as well to build bridges between communities and create that level of understanding um, between communities. So I will, I will stop here um, and yeah, happy to take any questions. Uh, Wei said, thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, very, how shall I say, very personal, very passionate contribution. I've been advised uh, that we, um, I'm not sure about your timelines, both Mary and Wei, you're able to stay on for the, uh, for the remainder of the session because I've been advised